Hello and welcome to the Java programming series. So in this series, obviously, we're going to be looking at Java from the ground up, or at least trying to. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the very basics, so basic output and uh, variable types, <laughs> data types, sorry. So as you can see here, I'm in a different IDE than Python, perhaps, uh, like, for example. Uh, and this is the Eclipse IDE. Uh, now I'm not going to go through like exactly how to set up the package hierarchy on the left here. And the point is we just have a Java file here and we're just going to get straight to it. The hierarchy here isn't too important for us right now. So as you can see, I already have something written down, public class Java basics, and then it has these curly brackets, curly braces. Uh, so what exactly is going on here? Well, right now we don't really have to understand what public or class means. The point is uh, essentially everything in Java needs to be written in what's called a method. And just bear with me, but a method is always a function that is in a class. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and every time we make a file, it can only have one class. Again, don't need to understand what a class is. It's just that every file that we create, every Java file that we create must have class in it. It must have only one class and the class name, Java Basics in this case, must correspond to the file name, Java Basics.java here. And when a Java program begins executing, since everything is within a method, which is just a function in a class, we, it's not like Python where you go from top down, top uh, from top to bottom, uh, and just execute line by line. Functions are defined, and then you can call them after they're defined. Uh, Java instead is, of course, everything's in a method. So the the interpreter again, we'll discuss how Java exactly is executed later. But um, the point is, uh, Java needs an entry point into the program. And so the class that includes public static void main string args. Uh, again, you don't need to understand what this means. Just type it out, follow along. Uh, public static void main string args can be a bit of a mouthful, but of course we need that. And what this does is essentially it's the method. Uh, again, we've, it, this is just a method definition here. Well, declaration here. Uh, it's, it's, it's the entry point into our program. And so everything that will actually happen in our program is goes under this main method. So that might have been a lot to take in, but now we'll get a little, a little more from the ground up. Of course, we needed this uh, set up to actually start coding anything that will work. So... First, we'll go over some uh, basics uh, verbally. So, I mean, of course, this is basics. So everything in Java, uh, everything you code in Java is from the mo default, the most default fundamental package called java.lang. So java.lang. And uh, I put the double slash, forward slash, to specify a comment. Of course, you can do like multi-line comments like that with a slash, asterisk, and then and asterisk, uh, asterisk uh, slash. You can also do what you call Java doc comments, which I'll show uh, a bit in a moment. So uh, java.lang is the most fundamental package. And of course, you don't need to import this package or like include it in your program explicitly. It's already there in any .java file. Uh, and of course, you need to have Java on your computer, uh, the uh, JDK. That includes the JRE and all of that jazz. Uh, again, not going through exactly how all of that works right now. Uh, I just assume you have Java set up right now. So uh, java.lang essentially defines the Java language itself, the very basic stuff like what public means, what static means, what void means, etc. So uh, yeah, that's the default most package. And uh, there are different, uh, and of course in there, there uh, are even more modules and packages you can refer to. One of them being system. 
System is also a pretty basic one. It gives you control over well, the system. Uh, that's a pretty vague description right now, but of course I'm not trying to overcomplicate things. So if we try to output certain things, uh, like in Python, it's print and, you know, print and then the parentheses. But in Java, of course, we need to have, uh, we need to have system dot out dot print one dot print line. That, that, that means print line. And then we can pass in an argument of really any type into the parentheses here as an argument. Now, uh, dot print line uh, only takes one argument. Um, I'll show you some stuff where you, uh, in a moment uh, where you can join together things. I'll explain it in a moment. But uh, system dot out dot print line means that under the system package, essentially sub package of the java.lang package, uh, you need to uh, access the out package. So that gives you access over the output stream. So there are these two things you call the input and output stream. Uh, essentially, they deal with the basic input and output over the uh, basic peripherals like your keyboard, your mouse, etc. Uh, out just simply refers to the output stream. Again, not trying to complicate things, uh, over complicate things. And under that, there is a method, a function, called uh, dot, uh, print line. So we can pass in a string, uh, a string for example. Uh, so that a string is really just anything in quotations here. So uh, of course it's, this, it's the same idea as it is in Python, if you know it. It's just, a string in uh, Java has to be enclosed by two quotation marks. And in there comes a string of characters. So let's say, hello, my name is da da da. Okay. So this will output exactly what's in the quotations into the console here. Hello, my name is da da da. That's pretty basic. And I'll explain even more what strings are in just a bit. But uh, so that's the print line method. Now, one thing to know about print line is that there is actually a new line after whatever is uh, printed out. That's the default nature of print line. So there's also another method called system dot out print. What this does is the same thing as print line except it has to have an argument, of course. Print line can take in no argument, like it can take in zero arguments, that's possible, but print has to have like one uh, argument. And uh, yeah, it has to have one argument. And the only, essentially the only difference is that it does not go to the next line after. So if I say E, and then also have another print, you'll see that they're, they'll print on the same line, EE. -E. So that's pretty interesting. And now, before I get on to formatting strings, uh, like putting, uh, putting them in certain ways we want them to be, um, I want to introduce you to variable types. So I have them noted down here. So of course we have int, double, boolean, char, and I'll explain what these are. Then we have some rather niche ones, byte, short, long, and then we also have a string and I'll uh, cover some topics under them. Uh, but essentially there are two different types of variables in Java and in really any programming language, uh, I guess you can say. Uh, those two types being primitive and reference variables reference types. So primitive so primitive uh, types we'll cover first. So primitive types essentially just means very basic information. And uh, very basic information, yes. So th those are like uh, basic numbers, true and false values, um, stuff like that. Uh, single characters even. So when we're uh, when we're talking about primitive or really any variable, 
we have two parts to actually creating the variable itself, if that makes sense. So that means we need to establish that there is a variable and give the name, and we need to establish its value. So in Java, you need to specify the type first, the type of the variable. Then you need the identifier, which is simply the name of the variable. You say equals, and uh, that you then you give the value, of course. And one thing I forgot to mention is that every line in Java actually ends with a semicolon, uh, semicolon. And that's just to indicate to the um, compiler that that's the end of a line. Because actually what you can do in Java is actually write everything out on one line and it'll still run exactly like perfectly. But of course we programmers write it on different lines just for readability sake. Also, I'm just gonna go to the next line in case I wanna do anything afterwards. So yeah, back to variables. You have the type, you have the identifier, and you have the value. So for example, int, you saw on my notepad here, uh, int. So int just means integer. So that's really just any non-decimal number, including zero. So we can have int and just call it my int or whatever. Say equals, let's say two. Now, you see there are no like under like uh, no error underlines. Of course, it's giving me an underline here because I never use this variable, but you see there's no error here. Uh, if I run it, it'll run perfectly fine. However, if I say it's 2.6, then that's gonna give me an error. Let's run this. Okay, it says, Exception in thread main, unresolved compilation problem, type mismatch cannot convert from double to int. I'll explain what a double is in just a second. But essentially what it's saying is that we said the variable is going to be an integer, but we gave it a non-integer value. So we essentially lied to the compiler and therefore it can't run properly because what it actually does when we, de when we declare the type of something, a primitive type more so, uh, it allocates the appropriate amount of memory uh, in your RAM, random access memory. And then, of course, we can uh, store only appropriately sized and appropriately formatted values in that memory, uh, in that allocated memory. Now, what actually happens when you store primitive values, and I'll obviously cover some more in just a second, what happens in your, in your computer's memory is that whatever value is given to the uh, variable, essentially memory is allocated in a structure called a stack, the, the stack rather. Uh, and that is really just a very specific block of memory. We can think of it like that. It's a very specific block of memory. And these primitive values, these basic values just go directly into that stack. Uh, and by stack, I mean like literally just a stack of values. You can think of it like that. So again, not going too deep, just trying to give you a sense of what's going on here. Now, before I cover other types, uh, I want to mention that you can actually declare the variables and then give their values after. And so uh, what that is, is just declaring the type. So like declaring the variable just means giving it uh, its type. So having the type and its identifier <laughs> and the identifier of the variable. And then assignment is actually assigning the uh, assigning a value to the variable. Together, declaration and uh, declaration and assignment make up what you call initialization. So some other types, some other primitive types, and of course I won't cover every single one, just the most useful ones or most common ones. The next one is double. Double is essentially any decimal number. Of course it has uh, restrictions on how specific it can get in terms of decimal precision, but that's not of worry right now. So we can say uh, my double or whatever is equal to 5.6. And even if we give it like an integer like five, 
it'll still interpret it as 5.0. So that, that's fine. 5.0, but we'll say 5.6. Uh, yeah, so that, that's what doubles are. Uh, there are also floats, which are also decimal values in a way. Uh, however, there are, of course, minor differences I won't cover right now, but just keep in mind that there is also float. Uh, there are also Booleans. These are very useful. These are just true or false values on off. They can they can uh, represent many different things uh, that are just that can just be in two states. So let's say my bool and um, true. Now true is also like another keyword in Java, and uh, of course that just means like a true value. Uh, of course, this only has to in, in terms of memory, just just a tidbit of information. Uh, Boolean values really only take up um, one bit of memory. So literally just a zero or one, false being zero, true being one. And that's really all that is. Um, and there are also chars. Char is short for character. And so uh, let's just call it my char. One thing to note about characters is that they must be surrounded by single quotes. I know in Python, you might know as well, uh, in Python, you can have uh, like single characters uh, or full on strings in single or double quotes. It doesn't really matter. But in Java, you have to use double quotes for strings, which I'll get to in just a second in more depth. Uh, and chars have to be in single quotes. Chars are single characters. Like that's pretty self-explanatory, and uh, but of course you need to have a value between the single quotes, and that's why it's giving me an error right here. So one thing to understand about characters is that yeah, there's some there's single characters, of course, uh, but what's actually stored in uh, the computer's memory when we talk about a character is it's at it's actually an integer. And that integer is what you call an ASCII value. ASCII value. So what an ASCII value is, it's, it's just a 16-bit uh, internationally recognized, uh, it's an internationally recognized standard of representing essentially any character in uh, just 16 bits. 16 bits of memory, two, two bytes. <laughs> so uh, that's that's just actually what's stored in your computer. But of course, Java recognizes that it's a character. And then when you output it, which I'll show in just a second, it actually outputs whatever the character itself is. So uh, of course, uh, these are the main data types that we usually deal with, the main primitive data types. But there are also bytes, shorts, and longs. So what they are, are byte is really just a smaller integer. So integer, uh, of course, uh, it's typically 32 bits in size. So of course, it can't go on to like infinite, like infinite number of values. It's, it's very limited, not very limited, but it, it is limited uh, up to a very big and very small number. But uh, a byte has a smaller range. I believe it's like negative 127 to positive 128 or something around that. So, uh, and that's of course, because byte literally means only taking up one byte of memory, eight bits. And so of course that's uh, two to the power of, sorry. Um, I forgot the exact values. Uh, and of course I can't do the math in my head right now, but uh the point is byte is more limited in its range. If you really want to be very specific about how you handle your memory, uh, the, the computer's memory, then uh, you might be using things like byte and short. Short is also really just uh, between, this, uh, between an int size integer and a byte size integer. And then there's long, which is just a much longer integer. These are all really just other integer types. So outputting uh, different values, uh, we can, of course, uh, we, there's no special way to handle them exactly. And we just simply write in, like, let's, let's print out the integer we have. Uh, 
And you see we got two, of course, because that's the value of my int. That's pretty straightforward. Now, uh, there was one thing I did want to, yes, uh, about the variable um, naming scheme, you might see me just, uh, essentially, when, you're, when your variables are multi, or like multiple words, you, you want the, of course, you don't want spaces, uh, or even underscores in Java. In Java, you don't really want underscores. So uh, what you do instead is do not capitalize the first word at all. And then every word after capitalize its first letter. This naming convention is called camel case. And it's just a very convenient way of uh, naming variables. So uh, yes, yeah, so we can we can easily print out primitive data types and um, r really any data type if you uh, if you uh, if you know what I'm talking about. But right now, yeah, we can pretty easily print out primitive data types, which are these basic values. Now there are also reference data types. Now, I'm only going to cover one, but its essence is that they're more complicated values like strings. Strings are strings of characters. Now, of course, these these can largely vary in size, and they you can do multiple things with them, which I'll get more specific on. But the point is, they're much more complicated values. They're not as simple as true, false, two points, uh, like two, five point six, etc. They're more complicated. So what actually happens when you store reference data types is that they're stored in a, a data structure. Of course, it's still in your RAM, but it, it's it's stored in a specific data structure called the heap. And that might sound a little vague or daunting or whatever, but it, it's stored in what you call the heap. And so that's uh, a more abstract uh specific, again, not trying to overcomplicate things, but it's a more abstract, larger way of storing more complicated data. And from the stack, which is typically what we access data from, what's actually stored in the stack uh, of uh, the stack memory allocation, what's actually stored there is just a, simply a reference or pointer or memory address, same thing. Uh, to the address of whatever reference variable we uh, variable or value we have in the heap. So in the stack, there's a pointer to an address in the heap. That's it. So uh, if we declare something like string, that's a reference type. It's a more complicated type. And all reference types start with a capital uh, letter. Uh, now, of course, that's not that doesn't always have to be true in, uh, until we get to like, uh, once we get to object oriented programming uh, later on. But um, for now, just kind of consider all reference types uh, starting with a capital capital letter. So uh, we want to declare a string, we'll call it my string, because why not? And you can just put it uh, like have double quotes and say hello. And of course, we can print that out. Hello. So that's pretty straightforward. Now I want to cover some a little like some things you can do with strings, concatenation and escape sequences. So what concatenation is, is it's pretty simple. It's just putting together different strings. Uh, not, not necessarily different strings, but just putting together strings um, using the plus operator in Java. So let's say now, yeah, let's say, um, I don't know, hello, and name. And what a name will be is just a string. And so what this will do is directly join these strings and print it out. And that's all concatenation is, just a fancy term for just putting strings together. So now there's another thing called an escape sequence. What that is, is you might have seen it before. It's pretty common across a lot of programming languages, of course. 
uh, there are things like backslash T, backslash N, and those are the main ones, really. Uh, I mean, I guess you can say backslash, like double backslash, backslash quote. But what, what this is, really, is that the backslash, backslash is a special character in strings. And uh, what it does, it, it takes literal values and takes their non-literal meaning and vice versa. It takes non-literal values and takes their literal value. So if we say backslash T, for example, T itself is a literal value. It, like Meaning when we actually display T in a string, it's very, it's literal. We can just type in T and it, it's, it's, it's at its face value. It doesn't have any hidden meaning, essentially. What backslash does is that it takes its non-literal value and that, and in the case of uh, T, it means a tab space. In terms of N, it means a new line. In terms of backslash, now backslash is, of course, a non-literal value. And so backslashing a backslash itself takes its literal value. So that means just a backslash itself. And of course, the same thing happens with a quote and other special characters like, uh, I forgot the uh, some other special characters, but the point is it takes non-literals into literals and literals into non-literals. A lot of literal talk there, but for example, uh, I can give you uh, an example like backslash backslash. That'll just print out a backslash because we're escaping the non-literal value of uh, the backslash. And uh, we can also do the same thing for a quotation. And we'll see a quotation printed out after. There you go. And that's essentially all there is to escape sequences. So overall, they're just sequences of characters that escape the typical meaning of characters. Hence the name escape sequences. So that's essentially all there is to strings for now. But uh, I, uh, I do want to cover constants and casting. So what constants are, are they're just constant values, values that never change. And how you make them, and essentially they can actually be of any type. You can make constant reference types and constant uh, primitive types. Like we can say final string, my string is hello, and we don't get any error. Typically, you really only have a constant primitive types. So we can say final, uh, what do I want to make final? Boolean, this channel exists. I can't think of anything else. We can say true. Okay. So now if I try to actually assign the this channel exists, the value of false, then you see we get an error because the final local variable this channel exists cannot be assigned. It must be blank and not using a compound assignment. What that essentially means is that we've made a final, a constant, and we're trying to change it, but that's not allowed. So that's all there really is to constants. And so let me just say that's a constant so you guys remember. And uh, another thing is casting. What casting is, is just another way to say converting between types. Now, typically, and for now, we'll really only uh, discuss casting between prim like amongst primitive types. So what I mean is if we have an integer, and I'll just start fresh here, integer call, uh, called A, and we'll assign it to one, and we have a uh, double called B, and we want to use A's value. Well, no, actually, I should instead say that the other way around. Double. Okay, that's like 1.5. Okay. Now, if I have an integer called B, and I want to use A's value, but as an integer, what I'm going to do is say that's equal to A. Now, here's the thing, you see an error, because obviously double cannot convert to int, unless we explicitly cast it to an int using these parentheses here, and then specifying the type inside. 
Now, if I print out B, you might be surprised about how this handled. Of course, we casted at A to an integer. Do you think it'll round or do something else? So it prints out one. That's a little bit strange, but uh, what it actually did is that it truncated the decimal. It truncated the decimal. So uh, when we convert from decimal values to integer values, again, decimal, I say decimal instead of double because of course we can have decimal values as doubles or floats. But when we convert from decimals to ints, then the decimal, we don't round the uh, decimal value. Instead, we simply take the decimal value off. We truncate it. And that's all the casting does. Now, of course, they can, this can go both ways. We can say A is like, uh, double of B. We can go both ways, and we don't get any error. Now this is uh, now going both ways isn't always isn't always the case, but for our purposes right now, we can essentially go between almost every primitive uh, type uh, both ways. Now, of course, that doesn't work for everything. Like if you go to a, uh, go from a Boolean to a char, that just won't work. Or like a, uh, a Boolean, or rather a double to a Boolean, that just won't work. Well, actually, that, that has a special case. But the point is there are certain restrictions. Of course, uh, you can just make sense of it logically. But uh, there is one thing that I want to point out regarding characters. Characters can actually be convert like if we say char a is one well no uh char another char is one no not one a and remember i said that when we actually declare a, and like when we actually initialize a character what's actually stored in memory is the integer value so what we can do is if we want to take its ascii value ASCII val, we can actually can uh, cast the char another char to an integer, and we don't get any uh, errors. Of course, because now we're just storing the ASCII value, so we can just try printing out the ASCII value. There we go. We get 97. So the ASCII value of A is 97. And I believe like Z, I'm not going to do the addition right now, but I believe it was like 126 or something. Uh, something like that. Was it 126? 120. I believe it was 123 instead. But anyways, uh, the point is you can convert from chars to integers and char uh, and integers to chars as well. Now, uh, there is another uh, thing I also want to cover, and that is string methods. String methods are, again, string is a reference type. And so we can do more than just use its direct value. Uh, it has like certain facts about it. It has like strings have lengths, how, like how many characters long they are. Uh, we can convert them to uppercase, lowercase, all that kind of stuff. So that's why it's a reference type. It's very abstract. It's not as simple as primitive types. Primitive types. So if I okay, I'm just going to talk about the string methods. Of course, methods are just functions in the string class, more specifically. Like string methods are just functions in the string class. So now I might have confused you there, but the point is methods. They're just functions we can apply to strings. So if we call a string and just call it string one and just say uh string one i don't know just call it string one then there are different things we can do to it let's try printing out string one dot to uppercase now you might have seen there that there was just a list that popped up with like everything that i could do to the string that's just the list of all methods and attributes which i'll talk about in a later video, but uh, there's just a list of a whole uh, bunch of stuff we can access under any string type. 
So if I print uh, string one to uh, dot two uppercase, obviously it's just going to convert everything in string one to an uppercase string one. Similarly, there's dot two lowercase, obviously. Now there's also a length method. So we can say string, not uh, yeah, uh, method, sorry. So we can take its length, and that's seven. String one is seven characters long. And there's also dot, uh, what else is there? There's obviously char at. Char at is a very common, um, commonly used method. And of course, length is as well. And what that is, is that it this method returns a character type. So you want to be careful with the, how you use it in later programs. But uh, the point is, it takes in an integer, and that integer is the index of the character you want to retrieve from the string. So if I pass in zero, and, and we know indexing starts from zero and goes up to one, two, three, etc., uh, up to the uh, string's length minus one. If, if I say uh, dot char at zero, I'm referring to the first character. So, of course, we can print that out and we'll get s because s is the first character. Now, unlike Python, we cannot use negative indices. If I if I uh, put a negative, pass a negative one here, we'll actually get an error. See, we'll get an exception, string index uh, out of range negative one, because obviously it doesn't know what negative one means in this context. There's also another method called dot substring. And this can take in one or two uh, arguments. If it takes in a one, then what it'll return is uh, starting from the index we pass in, let's say two, uh, so the third character, it includes that character and goes to the very end and returns exactly that. So if I print that out, we get ring one. So like it, skip, it skips ST and then starts from the third character R and then ring one. Now, if we pass in a second uh, index, then what will actually happen is that we'll start from the same and that first index because these are positional indices, which I'll talk about when I talk about methods in a later video. But the point is, the first number we pass in is the index we start at, so the third character. Then we go to the fifth character because that's what index four means, but we don't include that last character. So this will just print out elements uh, three and four, R I like characters th uh, index, uh, indices uh, two and three being elements two, uh, three and four. And uh, those are the uh, main string methods that are uh, quite often used. There's also system.out.println uh, string one dot two char array. Uh, some other ones. Oh yes, index of. I do want to cover that. And yeah, so index of is essentially uh, you can pass in uh, a string into this and say let, let, let's say we're trying to search for a. So we pass in something we're trying to search for, and index of will return the index of it in the string. If it's not in the string, it'll return negative one. So of course we see uh, we got negative one and that indicates that A is not in the string. If I pass in G, then see we get five because it's, at the, it's the sixth element. It's the sixth uh, character in the string. One thing to know about uh, note about uh, the index of method is that it only retrieves the first occurrence, the index of the first occurrence of whatever's passed in. So if there are like multiple G's in the string, for example, it'll only retrieve the index of the first occurrence of it. So if I put G after this, after one, we can see we still get five only, even though it's uh, there, it appears at two places. Anyways, that's essentially all there is to the very, very basics of Java. Hope, hopefully this wasn't confusing. I realize Java can be 
in fact, much more daunting than Python. It's not as user friendly, I guess we can say. But uh, hopefully, I didn't throw you off, and hopefully, you kept pace with me. Uh, if so, then cool. If not, then that's too bad. But uh, you can always rewatch the video, of course. But uh, until next time, see you.